Reconciliation is when two people resolve their differences and they actually begin to work together. The word reconciliation seems antiquated in this present age of divisiveness and polarization. It's a word that has fallen from the common man's lexicon into the pile of unused, unneeded, unspoken linguistic terms and expressions. In a world where friendships come and go, but where enemies can last a lifetime, it shouldn't be surprising that reconciliation is seldom heard or spoken. After all, people might feel obligated to make and keep room in our vocabularies for such valuable phrases as, go to hell, F you, and if I see you again before I die, it'll be too soon. But fortunately, that's not the case for the Vietnam veterans we've been following in this series. Welcome to the By War and By God podcast. I'm your host, Kent Williamson. This show is a companion series to the award-winning documentary film, By War and By God. In the podcast, we've been telling the remarkable accounts of people whose lives were forever changed by the Vietnam War. You've heard stories of heroism and stories of tragedy, and today we'll hear some amazing stories of reconciliation, which of course is the result of a magnetic force that tugged and pulled and eventually drew these soldiers, medics, machine gunners, and crewmen back to Vietnam for the purpose of serving some of the poorest of the poor in that beautiful country. But before we jump into today's episode, allow me to tell you about Big Heaven Cafe. Big Heaven Cafe is the online store for Paladin Pictures. It's the place to go to purchase any of Paladin's films, including the documentary by Warren by God. So please click your way to BigHeavenCafe.com. That's BigHeavenCafe.com. And use the coupon code PODCAST to save five bucks on the By Warren by God DVD. And don't forget, that 20% of all sales of By War and By God from Big Heaven Cafe go to the nonprofit Vets with a Mission, the group that since 1989 has taken nearly 1,400 Vietnam veterans back to Vietnam for healing and, what's that word? Oh yeah, reconciliation. In today's episode, we'll see what reconciliation looks like. What does it mean to reconcile with yourself, with the country in which you fought, with your former enemies, and ultimately, with your Creator. All right, here we go. One of the most interesting things I experienced, there was a, there was a, a man on the team that I was on who was a Vietnam veteran, but had never really experienced closure. This is Bill Steele. He had been involved in a, a battle on the Mekong Delta where a number of the people in his outfit had been, had been killed. And Bill was still struggling with that. And while we were over there, he got a chance to go up the Mekong Delta and actually went to the spot where this ambush had taken place. And after he, he returned from the Mekong Delta, he called his wife and they had a conversation on the phone. And she said, you have just given me the, the four sweetest words I have ever heard from you. And he said, I just said three words. I said, I love you. She said, no, you said something else. You said, my war is over. And that was, that was really something significant to me to, to hear this man say that it, that was closure for him. And so he was able to make that reconciliation with his past. And I think that was significant. In the 1800s, one of America's great poets wrote a few lines called Reconciliation. Perhaps we can learn something from his perspective. Reconciliation by Walt Whitman. Word over all, beautiful as the sky. Beautiful that war and all its deeds of carnage must in time be utterly lost. That the hands of the sisters' death and night incessantly, softly wash again and ever again this soiled world. For my enemy is dead. A man divine as myself is dead. I look where he lies, white-faced and still, in the coffin. I draw near. I bend down and touch lightly with my lips the white face in the coffin. What do you think reconciliation means? How would you define that? Reconciliation, I think, has a couple of different interpretations as far as Vets with a Mission is concerned. Again, Bill Steele. One, obviously, is I think that many of the veterans have the opportunity to, to reconcile with their past and to 
to perhaps undergo some uh, a healing experience. And then there is the fact that we were at odds with this country. We were, we were fighting one another and now we've had the opportunity to be, to be reconciled with them, to be able to uh, uh, help them, to, to help them overcome some of the, the difficulties that they're experiencing in their country. Reconciliation and forgiveness are not the same thing. This is Bob Perigallo. Jesus himself forgave everybody he ran into, but there's not one person in the scriptures that ever asked Jesus for forgiveness. He automatically gave it. Reconciliation is more than that. Reconciliation is when two people resolve their differences and they actually begin to work together. And our work in Vietnam could not be accomplished unless the government and the soldiers that we fought against um, allowed us to work together with them. We've accomplished some very powerful and dynamic things in Vietnam over the years and that only came about because people that we met, that we built relationships with, partnered with us and allowed us to work with them in rebuilding and reestablishing um, if it was health care or whatever it was in Vietnam that we were doing, orphanage work. So there was a partnering and that's what reconciliation is. Reconciliation to me, as I, as I look at what we've done in Vietnam, I have seen two or three things really that stand out. This is Cal Dunham. I have seen reconciliation with just the people of Vietnam, those that we're serving. When we're helping them, we're just looking at each other as people that are helping each other. So I, I see a reconciliation there. I don't see an animosity of them toward us or us toward them. I have seen reconciliation with former enemies where we have sat down at a table for dinner together, VC, NVA sitting on one side of the table and a bunch, bunch of us sitting on the other side of the table just in our way that we can communicate through interpreters or through broken English or whatever, being able to talk to one another. And I, I see the realization from both sides of that table from the, by the end of the evening that uh, we all had a mission, but now, quite frankly, we're just, just a bunch of old farts sitting there having a beer together and talking about the old days. For me, I have never seen anything, oh man, I can't wait to get out of here. I just sit there and say, hey, this is great. This is great because, hey, we did what we did and we both were doing because for whatever reason, our governments were telling us this is what we were to do. But now, you know, that's all behind us. Let's just have a good time. And then the third part of that reconciliation, I've seen, I know because it happened to me, I was able to reconcile in my own heart and mind some guilt that I had, uh, such a strong negative attitude toward the Vietnamese themselves, not just soldiers, but everybody. Uh, I've been able to reconcile that. There's been a reconciliation in my own heart and mind and my soul about the people of Vietnam. So that, that's what it means to me, Those basically those three areas. Define reconciliation for me. What, what does that look like? But first, do you know that you can go to Vietnam with Vets with a Mission? Yes, you. Whether or not you're a Vietnam veteran, whether or not you're a medical professional, you can experience some of the thrill of serving, of caring for the people in the rural villages of that beautiful country. You can experience reconciliation for yourself. Learn more about the upcoming trips at vetswithamission.org and start making your plans today. All right, back to the show. Define reconciliation for me. What, what does that look like? Reconciliation to me means taking people who have diametrically opposed vision or purpose. This is Dave Carlson. But finding those parts of what they are or what they do that can be aligned to work in tandem to go forward. We all know that when two opposing forces meet, they don't go anywhere. They just sit there and grind. But somehow, even people who are diametrically opposed at some point can find a place where they agree and where they can become brothers and can make positive movement. 
and those two opposing forces go alongside and move in a positive direction, that to me is one definition of reconciliation. There's a lot of different ones. But in this case, we had former combatants who would actually sit down with each other and plan out what they could do to both improve the country and improve the lives of the, of the people who are the children of those that they fought. And that to me is reconciliation. What does reconciliation mean? When I talked to Bill Kimball in the early years and some of the early board members, I think it was a two-pronged process. This is Jim Proctor. They wanted to reconcile to some extent, especially the Vietnam vets, with their experience over there with the people. And at the same time, they wanted the people to recognize that there was a further reconciliation, and that's reconciliation with Jesus Christ. And because Vets with a Mission has worked in a communist country, we sometimes have to downplay or be a little bit more discreet in the reconciliation of Jesus Christ. I think that's where just working one-on-one -on -one or working on a project with someone um, establishing a relationship is. I think uh, for some of the vets that have gone over there, it, it has certainly helped them to reconnect with the people, to see areas that they may have served in. Um, I'm so thankful that I didn't have to fight a war over there. And, and it's interesting when I've asked veterans, friends of mine, if they want to go back, there's no middle ground. There's either I've always wanted to go back, I love the people, I love the food, the country was beautiful, or there are people that don't even want me to finish the question in a sentence that's having to say, no way do I ever want to go back. And I'm sure that's related directly to their experience and, and what they experienced in the Vietnam War. Um, and I've seen people that have had a, a certain hesitancy on these trips going back. They don't know what to expect. And I know that that's been important for them to go back there see that and see where they were at and experience that again and that helps them. It helps them with the issues in their life. I met a man in the Quezon Valley who, Mr. Son, and he was the chairman of the um, People's Committee. This is Bob Perigallo. And we built one of our early clinics in the Quezon Valley and to do that there's a lot of meetings that have to be attended. There's a lot of preliminary handshaking, you know, we have to have a beer together, we meet the People's Committee. The clinic that Bob Perigallo helped build for Mr. Somm's commune was the one he told us about in last week's episode. As you recall, the area had a childbirth death rate of 33 percent, and after Vets with a Mission's clinic opened, the death rate during childbirth dropped to just 3 percent. And we were having uh, dinner together with members of the People's Committee and a small group of us from um, Vets with a Mission. And we shook hands, and Mr. Somm had a wooden leg. And I asked him if, how he lost his leg, if he lost it in the war, and he said yes, that uh, um, uh, he got shot by a machine gun. So we, we sat down, and, and through the interpreters, we were having this communication, and I told the interpreter, I said, uh, would you tell Mr. Somm that I was a machine gunner? And the interpreter didn't want to do it. And, you know, it got real quiet and everybody got hushed and the Vietnamese around us through the interpreter know what was going on. And I just, I said, tell him. And uh, so he told Mr. Somm that, that I was a machine gunner and that I served in the Quezon Valley with the 9th Marines. And I looked over at Mr. Somm and he smiled and kind of grinned a little bit. And, and then I told the in, interpreter, I, I said, uh, I'd like to tell Mr. Somm that I might have been the one that shot his leg off. And um, I don't want to say that I'm sorry for doing that, but I want Mr. Somm to, to know and understand that um, the war is over. And at one time we, we could have been and probably were uh, former enemies and engaged in combat, but now we're here together working together to improve the quality of, of health care for his, for his commune. And Mr. Song stood up and he shook my hand and Mr. Song hugged me and we embraced each other and that was the a dynamic moment in in my Vietnam experience with Vets with a Mission. When I talked with Mr. Song and my experience with him 
I know that in I had forgiven him as an enemy before I ever spoke anything, before it had ever come out of me. It was something that happened deep inside of me and the end result was that you know we embraced and as, as uh, fellow um, warriors there was an honor and there was something between us. You may or may not know but uh, founding uh, scriptural foundation for Vets with a Mission is 2 Corinthians 5.18 which is the Ministry of Reconciliation. Nearly 2,000 years ago, the Apostle Paul wrote a couple of letters to the people who were the church in the town of Corinth. In his second letter, he wrote the part that Chuck Ward referred to, which says this, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. So Vets with a Mission has always been about reconciling people to one another, and, and in this context, country to country, vet to vet, and I'm talking about Americans, South Vietnamese to Viet Cong, NVA, and I'm talking about a people of the Vietnam to the people of the United States, and most importantly, being reconciled to God. So Vets with a Mission, for many years would take American veterans and introduce them to Viet Cong and NVA veterans at what we called reconciliation dinners. And it's, it's always very tense when those dinners start, but 99.9% .9 of the time, the veterans on each side of that table, by the time that dinner is over, they've, they've got this special bond. And it's not about winning the war, or killing your enemy, it, it gets down to the lowest common denominator. Men begin telling one another, I was just doing my job. I was doing what I was told to do. And I didn't necessarily like it, but I did it because I wanted to serve my country. And soon these men who have issues, I mean, no one goes to war, that they come back the same person, it just doesn't happen. They begin to share and it's a very emotional time and reconciliation becomes real because men who would have never thought of talking to one another, talking about their families, talking about their children, talking about let's have a beer together, let's get in touch, let's keep in touch. It takes place. And one of the most wonderful things about reconciliation is, you know, a lot of people struggle with Vietnam, particularly the vets who serve there. And through reconciliation, this is what happens. So many are stuck in the past and, and they have uh, so many terrible memories. And I like to make the analogy that Vietnam is, 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 is like the pig in the pigsty. You know, you've got the pig and the pig is happy to be wallowing in that mud and filth and everything. And so I make the analogy that Vietnam is the pig. And you know, you can go in there and you can wrestle with that pig and you're going to come out smelling and looking like you know what. But that, that, that pig is going to come out smiling and feel good about itself. So why let Vietnam, why wrestle with the pig of Vietnam and let it, you know, have that effect on you. Let it run your life, ruin your life. It's time to move on. And through reconciliation, that's what happens. Vets go to Vietnam with Vets with a Mission. They meet their former enemy. They meet the people. And reconciliation comes full circle from the terrible memories of 1968 or 1969 to discovering the war is really over. And through reconciliation, that war within is finally over. And when I see vets, when that light bulb goes off, when they're in Vietnam on one of our teams, and they realize the war is over, not only there, but over inside, it makes, that is a great day to be in Vietnam on a Vets with a Mission team. One more time, Bob Paragallo. 
when the scriptures talk about God reconciling the word to, world to himself, it's not just that he forgave us of our sins, it's us learning to work together with him for the purpose of establishing his, his kingdom. We become partners with him. And reconciliation is that, that we learn to work together. Former enemies that were um, trying to kill each other now are working together to build and repair um, the tragedy of war, the tragedy of, of such a, a horrible experience. Out of it comes something that's positive and good. Thank you for listening to this episode of the By War and By God podcast from Paladin Pictures. You can learn more about By War and By God at bywarandbygod.com. Don't forget to use the coupon code podcast at bigheavencafe.com to save five bucks on your copy of the film. You can also watch By War and By God for free if you have an Amazon Prime account. You can find me on Facebook or Twitter. Just search for Kent C. Williamson. And while you're there, search for By War and By God and like or follow us. Please email your thoughts about the show to Kent at ByWarrenByGod.com. The By Warren By God podcast is written and produced by me, Kent C. Williamson, with sound design and finishing by Ashby Ratchford. Our audio engineer in the studio is Steve Carpenter, except he's missing today, so I don't know if we need to credit him. Thanks also to my brother Brad Williamson, who helped record the interviews in today's episode. Special thanks to Trevor Perzurski for his wonderful reading of the Walt Whitman poem, Reconciliation. Thanks, Trevor. The By War and By God soundtrack was composed by Will Musser, and for a limited time, you can download the entire soundtrack for free at ByWarAndByGod.com. Thank you to the entire Paladin team, which includes Leslie Wood, Steve Carpenter, Dan Fellows, and Ashby Ratchford. This podcast is a production of Paladin Pictures. Yep, Paladin is a film production company that sees the value in audio podcasts. Why? Because like is the case with By War and By God, the podcast can go deeper into the story than the film ever can. Paladin Pictures is committed to the creation of redemptive entertainment and thought-provoking cultural critique. Learn more about us and our films at paladinpictures.com. That's paladin, P-A-L-A-D-I-N, pictures.com. By War and by God is produced at the Paladin Studio in the amazingly wonderful, beautiful little town of Charlottesville, Virginia. And of course, thank you to our veterans, those who returned, and especially those who didn't like my wife's Uncle Floyd. Thank you. Next week on the By War and By God podcast. For a period of time, we were their enemy, but as we went back, we became um, people that were there to help them through their misery and their suffering. I finally uh, accounted for something. I, I amounted to something. I was, I was valuable in my life. My life meant something. I think I made a genuine difference. And that's what I hope people would remember about me and Vets with a Mission, that we made a difference, not only on this earth, but eternally. <laughs>